following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. That's Malik Hill. I'm Joey Tysick. And uh, we are deep into the football season now. It feels like we're into the thick of it. Um, but we have some uh, some NBA news this week. Kind of wild. Back-to-back weeks, Damian Lillard gets traded. Um, big blockbuster trade. And now the other piece of the puzzle has fallen. Drew Holiday has been traded from the Portland Tra- Trailblazers to the Boston Celtics. Malik, what's your initial thoughts on this trade? I think it's a big time move. I think it's the type of move that a contender uh, makes to get over the hump. I'm not predicting it yet. We haven't even gotten well. We're close to the preseason, mm-hmm. but yeah, I'm, I'm not making any predictions yet. But I, I personally love the move, even with them losing uh, Grant Williams. Not Grant Williams. Well, Robert. they lost him, but <laughs> yeah, Robert losing Williams. Robert Williams, that's what I wanted to say. Even with them losing Robert Williams, I somewhat understand them moving off of him because of his injury history and the fact that he can't uh, back up with like production on offense. Yeah. Chris Osporzingis has a history injury, but he at least can give you some buckets. Right. Yeah, and if he, if he stays end. healthy, he could be a big asset for them. Yeah, but yeah, on the Drew Holiday end, they have – probably the best guard defender in the league. Mm-hmm. A guy that can guard like one through four on most nights besides like Giannis Antetokounmpo and a few other guys. He can guard most power forwards because he's so strong. Right. And just knows how to defend of most NBA players. He gives you production on offense. He did have some pretty bad games in the playoffs and Jimmy Butler went crazy on him, but Jimmy went full MJ mode in the playoffs. So, yeah, I really can't blame Drew. It, Jimmy was going to destroy anybody in that series. Right. But, yeah, I I think he is a player that is – he adds to a winning situation. And that only improves Boston's uh, – the run they're trying to make to get to a championship. Yeah, Tatum and Brown needed more help on both ends of the ball. And they get some more offensive help with Porzingis. They get more defensive help with Drew. And Drew can also add some points. Yeah. So the full details of the trade, real quick. Uh, Drew Holiday gets to the Celtics. Blazers are getting Malcolm Brogdon, who at this point would be a good veteran presence for them, um, but also isn't going to take away from the young guys. Uh, Robert Williams, if, if he can stay healthy and DeAndre Ayton is kind of talking a big game right now that he's he's recommitted. DeAndre Ayton has said he wants to play the four, so I'm wondering if Chauncey is going to try to experiment with Ayton at the four and right. Robert at the five. Yeah, because that could be pretty good. The, the Blazers all of a sudden could be pretty solid yeah. uh, from there. Uh, they also got a 2024 first-round pick that belongs to the Warriors technically and then a 2029 unprotected first round from the Celtics. So pretty interesting move. I I think it's a good move overall, but again, it's it's similar to the Bucks at this point where these teams just don't have depth and that always concerns me especially when teams are trying to make a playoff run. Like let's pull up the potential depth yeah, chart. They they have several guys that have to improve a lot to be able to play in the playoffs. Yeah. In the regular season, Sam Hauser will be fine. Peyton Pritchard will be fine. Um, who's who's the the backup center number? For? Luke Cornett. Yeah. Luke Cornett will be fine in the in the regular season. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, when it comes to playoff time, they they might have to make another move in order to get a guy or two, or sign a veteran at the last minute right. to come off their bench or something. Because yeah, I I don't know if you can trust those guys once you get to the big time. Yeah, potentially. Rounds. I mean, we don't know what their lineup's going to be like if they're going to go bigger, if they're going to go small. But they're 
rotational pieces can be Derek White and Al Horford, uh, which Derek White, you know, at times can fill in the scoring role. Yeah, Al he, Horford. He might start with Drew Holiday. So yeah, there's a potential for that. Maybe bring Al Horford off the bench. And Al Horford at this point in his career, he's just a solid like ten and eight kind of yeah. guy. He gave them a lot more in the playoffs than people expected. He yeah. still looked pretty good. Yeah, and then outside of that, Peyton Pritchard. Me. He got exposed in the playoffs, but yeah, yeah. Um, he's a he's a good backup in the regular season, right? Like you said, Sam Hauser. I think he can be valuable. I think he can because he's a knockdown shooter. Yeah. Uh, other guys that like could maybe get in there. I don't know. O'Shea Brissett is on the team now. I I forgot they got. Yeah. He can he can play. He could. Yeah. He can be good off the bench for them. I like O'Shea Brissett. Uh, like you said, Luke Cornett. Me the, okay. Uh, Wenyan yeah. Gabriel, he's that, another that's one. That's the one where yeah, I, he, he's another one that you keep thinking yeah. is going to break out, and he never does. I saw a tweet. Uh, was it a tweet or an ESPN post? It said the Boston Celtics have have uh, completed a deal with seven footer Wenyan Gabriel. <laughs> when has everybody anybody called Wenyan Gabriel a seven footer? <laughs> right. Like let, let's calm down. Yeah. So I don't know. It's definitely a good move. It's like they basically now at this point have upgraded from Marcus Smart. When everybody was so concerned about losing Marcus Smart, Drew Holiday is a better Marcus Smart. Um, and definitely their starting rotation is going to be really good, I think. Um, and it gives them a little bit of that Boston defense with Drew. He can kind of be somewhat of a leader, I think, for Jalen Brown and Jason yeah. Tatum. Maybe, uh, taking, maybe taking a little bit off of those guys and they can focus more on their game than the other players on the team. Yeah. I honestly think that perimeter defense <laughs> could be like the best in the league by, by like a wide margin. Yeah. Because Drew and Derek White alone are good, are good defenders. Jalen Brown has always had the potential to be a lockdown defender. Jason Tatum has improved a ton. Like they, they can really like lock down everything outside and like just force people to feed it to the post. Right. And we live in a, era where it's threes over twos mm -hmm. so if you force a, a team to like live by twos yeah you have the advantage right yeah i agree so again it'll be interesting and again it makes another team that the pistons are gonna have to deal with at, at least they're not in the same division but same conference so you're still gonna see them at least twice the pistons are just trying to win 30 <laughs> so yeah well <laughs> they're in different stratospheres we'll right get now. into that at some point but it, it just makes it that much harder uh, going forward. Um, all right, moving on to uh, college football. Interesting week, I would say. Um, I do want to rehash the reality check uh, going back to the top four because I think the playoff teams right now are pretty interesting at where they're at. Um, so we're just going to ignore Michigan State and blowing another game. <clears throat> it's just it's a mess over there at least they looked a little interesting on offense a little yeah they had a few moments they did like an old lions thing of making it look like they should have won that game yeah. and then finding a way to lose yeah, it's, it's it's not great when Cade mcnamara goes out <clears throat> and you lose to deacon yeah. hill who has had a nuclear arm but boy he was just slinging it everywhere like there wasn't a lot of accuracy with deacon hill yeah. He has a potential, but yeah, they lost to Iowa's backup. Yeah, it, it was ugly. Uh, giving up a punt return late in the game. Cooper DeGene is a problem. That was awful. I think he might <laughs> be the like top DB in the draft upcoming because he's a freak. Yeah. And now I would say, you know, we were pretty sure that Michigan State could make a bowl game this season. I don't think it's happening. It's it's tough. It's looking bad. Um, Who do they have up next? Uh, Rutgers, I believe. Um. Oh, they don't play this week. Yeah, they they have a bye and then the they play Rutgers. Is, I like oh, at Ruck. Man, see, that's they what they I'm gotta saying. win that Rutgers is tougher than them right now. Yeah, you you have to win that game if you're gonna make a bowl. Yeah, right. And at this point, even if they make something, it's it's if they make the if barrel. they make a bowl game, it's an accomplishment at this point. Yeah, but it's it's gonna be a bottom of the barrel bowl game. So yeah. we'll see. Um. I guess we'll we'll skip around. We'll go straight to Michigan because I want to do a reality check for them. Okay. Finally, I felt like they looked good 
They looked from start to they, finish. They looked top three good, finally. Yeah. Finally. And now, sure, maybe that's not saying much because they played Nebraska, but... This is how you're supposed to look. Right. You're supposed to win these kind of games. Yeah. You're supposed to make it look easy, and that's, I think, what they did. Um, normally, in a blowout game, I would be concerned that, you know, J.J. only had 156 yards, Blake Corum only had 74 yards, but that was all like... They were out halfway through the third. Right, exactly. <laughs> they that were was, up like 38 nothing already. Yeah, that was so early on that I can't can uh, hurt him for that, so... Do you think do you think right now and, and this will roll over into Georgia, do you think right now Michigan has a good case for being number one? I think they do. And it's it's really funny looking at the way they started their schedule, how everybody said it's one of the worst schedules. It's it's a joke. You look at it now, UNLV is four and one. Bowling Green just beat Georgia Tech at Georgia Tech. I think they're four and one. Nebraska's Nebraska. Yeah. Indiana's kind of frisky. They're taking care of business like a top three team is supposed to. They're not, like, leaving any doubt. Yeah. On the other hand, Georgia, they had a bad half against a pretty average, almost below average South Carolina team. Mm -hmm. It took them a lot for them to beat Auburn, even though it was a road game, a rivalry game. Yeah. It took a lot for them to beat a rebuilding Auburn team. Yeah, Peyton Thorne really tried to uh, help Georgia out, and they <laughs> did not take it very easily. Listen, yeah, duh, Georgia right now, if Michigan and Georgia played today, I would take Michigan. Mm-hmm. Who knows what Georgia will look like by the end of the season. But yeah. as it appears right now, they don't have those guys mm-hmm. on defense or offense right now where it just looks like they're head and shoulders above everybody else in the SEC. Right. Yeah, and they, they, they just look like a really good team right yeah. now. Yeah. And sneakily, they have to play Kentucky this week. So, uh, now, I'm not saying that Kentucky's like a world beater or anything, but they looked pretty solid in their in their win this past week. But, I don't know. Um. So, do you think Georgia's still the real deal, though? Do you think this is a blip in the radar, or do you think this is finally, you know, maybe the year that they don't get it done? I'm kind of in between right now. I want to save my reservations for later in the season because that's when teams start to fully form. Right. But this hasn't been an amazing start to the season for Georgia. Mm -hmm. It's it's been some nail biters. It's been some disappointment for halves of football games. Yeah. Georgia fans are not happy with Mike Bobo at at offensive coordinator. Mm Mm-hmm. They're all they're unhealthy at running back. They have like two guys that are fully healthy and they are just okay. None of their receivers are very explosive. Like it's it's a it's a very strange situation. Brock Bowers is a superstar, so he's making things happen for yeah. them. Yeah. Like he kind of single handedly won that Auburn game for them. Right. But yeah, right right now they're they're not that juggernaut that they were the last two seasons. Mm-hmm. And also I think people need to start realizing how good Stetson Bennett has been the past two years. Yeah. Every time they needed plays made, he made them. Mm -hmm. There was no shadow of a doubt. Stetson Bennett got it done. Carson Beck is a very talented quarterback. He deserves to start for this Georgia team, but I don't think he has that thing, that extra thing that Stetson Bennett had. Right. I'm going to either run around or I'm going to scramble or I'm going to make this deep ball throw. Whatever he had to do to make a play, he did it. Yeah, Carson Beck is more. I'm gonna stand in this pocket and just figure it out. Mm-hmm. And that's he's still a good quarterback, but it's not the same dynamic level of play that Stetson had. Right. So yeah, it's it's, it's this is a different Georgia team. Yeah. And it's on different. the on the flip side, I would like to say this is a different Texas team than what we've been seeing. Uh, they just smashed Kansas after Kansas was having a pretty good season. Still are having a good season. Um, but they put that note to doubt. Um, and now they go into the Red River ri- rivalry looking pretty good. Um, where do you see Texas right now? Because they, they arguably also could be right in that number one conversation. So I I believe in Texas. For the first time in a long time, mm-hmm. 
probably since Colt McCoy, I believe in Texas. It's because of the talent that Steve Sarkeesian has been able to put together. They're just as talented as all the best teams in the country. Yeah. And they play like it. Not like other Texas teams where they had talent, but they weren't very good football players. These are really good football players. Yeah. Now, there is a thing with Texas that has been brought up in the past few days that is true and makes them look kind of suspect, even though they're not. Outside of JT Daniels and Jalen Milrow, Mm -hmm. which them two are, neither of them are like the best quarterbacks in the country. They played against Wyoming's backup quarterback. They played against Baylor's backup quarterback, and they played against Kansas's backup quarterback. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After the first two games, they've played backups. Okay. Now they've dominated those teams. Right. And that's exactly what a really good team is supposed to do. Mm-hmm. So I give them credit for that. Right. But it is something to look at. They haven't played a high level quarterback slash offense yet. Mm-hmm. They're taking care of business, and I respect it. But, yeah, just just a little something to pay attention to. I, I do believe in this Texas team right now. So then do you think that this, this weekend's game basically tells this you? This is a big game. Yeah. Yeah. Oklahoma, I don't think they're on the level of Texas quite yet. Mm-hmm. They're playing good football. Dylan Gabriel's playing great. He looks like he, what he was at UCF again. Yeah. I still don't think they have a great receiving core. Their running backs are just okay. And their defense has a few playmakers, but overall they're just solid. Mm-hmm. Texas wins this game. If they win this game, like, going away, like, confidently, yeah. then I'm all the way in. Mm-hmm. Back to it, to it being Texas again. But they, they have to prove it. And they still have to win a conference. Like, that that is – they have to really do something at a high level to be themselves again. Yeah. And they're on their way. Mm-hmm. So, I, I like – I really like what Texas is doing so far. Yeah. Um. And then – you know, I think did both did both Ohio State and Florida State both have buys last week? Yeah, they uh, did. Yeah, yeah. Um, those are the kind of the two next up teams that I think are still in the wait and see category. Ohio State has an interesting game this week. Who are they playing? Maryland. Yeah. Okay. Maryland is five and zero, oh, and I think they should be ranked, but they're still not. Mm-hmm. Their schedule hasn't been the greatest, but their offense is for real. Yeah. And they got some playmakers on defense. They are the top uh, vote-getting team that's not in the top yeah. 25 uh, right now. With the game being at Ohio State, I expect Ohio State to pull away eventually. Yeah. Because they're just that talented. Mm-hmm. But Maryland is interesting enough. Last The past, well, last year, they were in the game with Ohio State until like six minutes left in the game. And then Ohio State scored two touchdowns and won like 42-28. to 28. Yeah. But... They they've been interesting in these matchups before. Mm-hmm. There was I think Urban Meyer's last season at Ohio State, they were like a two point conversion away from actually beating Ohio State. It ended like fifty two to like fifty one. Yeah. So the yeah, Maryland, they're I I, I want to see what happens in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, what are the games to look forward to this week? So the big game at noon outside of yeah, Oklahoma Texas yeah, Red I River guess. rivalry at noon. Everybody will be watching that one. Mm-hmm. LSU Missouri is really really interesting. Yeah. LSU is three and two. Their defense isn't good, right? I don't know the last time LSU's defense was just flat out just giving up points. Like LSU was walking. Down, I mean, Ole Miss was walking down the field on LSU last week. Yeah, they got a big win over them. Uh, Ole Miss is four and one now. Mm-hmm. LSU is three and two. Fans are not happy. Right. Brian Kelly has to figure some things out, and Missouri is five and zero. Oh. Yeah. And, like, they actually have some players to pay attention to. Like, Luther Burden was a top 10 player in the country coming out two years ago. Receiver. He's been one of the best receivers in the country. Their quarterback, Brady Cook, has played really well. Their defense has been good. They've had a few weird games, like the game against Memphis a few weeks ago where they almost could have lost. But they handled business against Vanderbilt last week. They win this game. They'll be 6-0 and and maybe at the top of the East. Yeah. Yeah, so that'll be really fun. It's been a long time since we've seen Missouri <laughs> Yeah, be anything. Uh, Alabama plays Texas A&M at 3.30. Texas A&M lost their starting quarterback um, a few weeks ago. He's out for the season. Now they have Max Johnson starting, who's honestly one of the better backups in the country. So 
there's not a lot of drop off. They beat Arkansas last week, so yeah. their their offense has been improved from last year. Their defense is making plays. A lot of those five stars are living up to their talent. So it won't be an easy game for Texas and I mean for Alabama. And A and M was the one that knocked Alabama off last year, right? Uh, that was two years ago. Was it? Man. Yeah. Time. <laughs> that was two years ago. Anyway. Yeah, Alabama blew out Mississippi State at Mississippi State last week, so they played really well. Jalen Milrow is making plays, so that'll be really interesting. Mm-hmm. Like you said, Kentucky, Georgia, is at Georgia, so yeah, it, it's it's kind of tough to see Kentucky winning that one. Kentucky, Kentucky is a good uh, team, though. So Notre Dame, yeah. Louisville, how do you how do you feel about that? Notre Dame has been squeaking away, but I, I mean, don't, they've they've played Ohio State and then Duke. I think Louisville is decent. Okay. I, I think them being five and zero is kind of an illusion. <laughs> like they're they're undefeated, but I, I don't think they're that great. Yeah, honestly, like they have some quality players, but I uh, I think Notre Dame wins. Okay, and they might win going away. Yeah, yeah. This this might be a game where Notre Dame just shows they're the flat out the better team. Like I think Duke is per I personally think Duke is probably better overall than Louisville. Okay. Um, and then, like we said, Michigan, they're playing Minnesota. They don't have a tough game until yeah. – They got a night game in Minnesota. It shouldn't be that hard. Yeah. Minnesota couldn't score over 30 until last week. And a decent win over Louisiana, but they also let Louisiana score 24. Yeah. So you never know what you're going to get from Minnesota from one week to the next. Right. Like we said, Michigan doesn't really play anybody until November. Maybe Michigan State just because of the rival game. I was about to – listen. But – the the worse and weirder MSU looks, yeah. the scared the more scared I get about the Michigan game. Yeah, but it's Michigan just, is most likely going to win that game, but it's just going to make me uncomfortable. Yeah, it's just starting to feel like it's it's going to be one of those years where just Michigan State just doesn't show up. Um, Michigan State, luckily, getting getting the week off, they they need a break. Yeah, uh, for sure. So, um, yeah, that's uh, college football, and we move on to the favorite part of the segment for me. The picks because you won this week, I guess. Uh, no, actually. Oh, you said you said favorite part. I assumed you I just like the picks. I I like the NFL where it's at right now. I'm yeah. I'm enjoying a lot. There of were the a games. few games on Sunday. I was watching. I was like, I feel like I'm losing. But yeah, I guess I won. Uh, well, <laughs> we both won. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we both had good weeks. We both got eleven correct picks out of the games. We tied. Yeah, we tied. Eleven and eleven. Yeah. Wow. Um, so the big differences, I would say I went with Atlanta. You had Jacksonville. Eh. Um, I took Buffalo in my, against Miami. Buffalo looked really good in that game. Denver, Chicago was a toss up. You had Denver. Um, I had new Orleans at home. I thought they were going to do better. Tampa Bay looked like the much better team. Who's new Orleans coach. I don't know. (laughs) He's a younger guy. I think that might be a problem. That might be why New Orleans is so out of sync right now. Yeah. Um, and then I went with Houston. and They destroyed Pittsburgh. Yeah, that they looked crazy. good. And then I was surprised that you went with the Giants on Monday night. I kind of forgot man. about that one. I, <laughs> I I did not think the Giants were this bad. I didn't either. I still don't know if they're this bad. I think that's like, the one that I crazy. said I would have picked the Giants if you didn't pick first. Um, yeah, the Giants just look out of sorts. And I don't want a tangent too long on it, but I feel like people are getting way too upset about Daniel Jones. Like, it has been, it was one week. Realistically, I mean, obviously, he had four turnovers. But besides the turnovers, like, he was efficient, and he looked pretty good. He got sacked 11 times. Exactly. He, he, can't, he can barely, like, count to two or three in the pocket. Yeah. Um, he snaps and then he just has to move. And the other part that was weird is like people have been chopping up Zach Wilson all about how terrible he is. And then he had a good game against the Chiefs. And now we're back to, oh, maybe Zach Wilson can play for the Jets. And then Daniel Jones, you know, gets paid. People didn't like it. Then he looks okay. Then he gets blown out by the Cowboys. Then he looks good again. And then he loses and he gets sacked 11 times. And then people are like, oh, he's, he's the worst quarterback in the league. Well, you know, media overreaction. Just, this to is me, how it's it just, goes. It's like. Now, I, I personally 
I can understand the Zach Wilson thing because of the the situation mm-hmm. Monday night game against the Chiefs against Pat Mahomes and he outplayed Pat Mahomes. Yeah. That is impressive and I think that deserves some credit. Right. Like that that was almost a game where like his career was on the line mm-hmm. and he stepped it up. Yeah. And I get again I don't think anybody agreed with the Giants paying Daniel Jones Nobody. what they paid him. <laughs> yeah. But he did help them get to the playoffs last year. He his decision making was way better last year. I I will say that. Like he only he only threw a few interceptions last year. It was wild. Um I think he's already surpassed that this year. Um yeah, I think it was 15 passing touchdowns, five interceptions. Yeah, something like that. But um like they've been without Saquon Barkley who's kind of the key to their offense. Yeah. Uh, still doesn't have a number one receiver, which is yeah. They've been trying to use Darren Waller, and it just hasn't been working out. I don't know what it is, but I feel like just the Giants in general are a mess, and it's all falling on to Daniel Jones, which I kind of feel bad for him about. I don't know, just a weird tangent. All righty, tomorrow night, will you watch Chicago at Washington? Yes, yes, I'm. Wa- I am so in to the soap opera of the Chicago. <laughs> I literally, this this sounds like I, I I don't know if I'm just like into negativity. Yeah, maybe. I love watching Bears media videos <laughs> and their reactions and their rants. Yeah. I I I enjoy I enjoy sports rants overall. Mm-hmm. A good sports rant is something you can go back to all the time. Yeah. J- just seeing Bears fans, b- people on social media, people on actual radio, I I just can't get enough of it. Yeah. I love watching videos of of Bears reactions. And that game against Denver last week was very oh similar God. to what we just talked about. People had been ripping on Justin Fields, saying he's terrible, he's awful, and then he just shreds Denver's defense. We know Denver's defense is really bad. Yeah. But he looks really good throwing the ball. He's super accurate. And then at the end of the game, he throws an interception that was costly. Um, it's just... The luck of the Bears, and I'm loving it that they're getting that. <laughs> I, I'm kind of with you on that aspect. Listen, Justin Fields, potential MVP. Yeah. Well, we might win the division. Right. These are things Bears watch, fans. Watch out for the Bears this they, year. They were, they were saying this. Yeah. They were they were really hyping this up. That's yeah. that's just sad, man. Yeah. Um, that's sad. I don't know. This, I, I'm going to watch this game. I'm taking the commanders. <laughs> I'm, I've got a problem, but. See, and that's the problem. Chicago has become that team similar to the Giants for me, where it's like they can't keep losing these games. Listen, that it's like there feels like there's a time where they've got to figure it out. Like they do have some talent there. They are the train wreck that you can't turn away from. Yeah, they're that type of team. Like I, I, I have to see this. Mm-hmm. I have to see whether Justin Fields plays well again or if he's terrible again. I, I, I just got to see it. Yeah. I wish it wasn't Chicago. Yeah. Like, I, I want to hear the fans, too. I want to hear either the silence or the booze. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Chicago, but uh, th- this is all your fault. Yeah. I'm going with Washington as well because I'm I'm starting to feel like Chicago is becoming Vegas for me where I keep thinking they're going to win and they're just not. So, I'm going to go with Washington to start off. Uh, then we have the other uh, London game, back-to-back London games for is Jacksonville. Is the first time a team has played back-to-back international? I think it might Probably. be. Probably. It seemed yeah. ridiculous when I heard about it. Did they just stay in London for the week? I think so. I, I can't imagine them flying back to no, Jacksonville. Seems, like, yeah. That seems like a little bit much. Yeah. Uh, but Jacksonville is technically at Buffalo in London. Gotta love that logic. Gotta love it. Yeah. We're not taking Jacksonville. No. Right? <laughs> they listen. Something is wrong with that team right now. The Jags, something yeah. is off. They're just they're, You can't put your finger on it. They're not They're not clicking. Yeah. Exactly. And Buffalo. That that version of the Bills that we saw last Sunday is the best team in the NFL. Yeah. But they only play that way like seven times a year. Yeah. It's what we saw from them last year that we thought, oh, this team can just yeah. run run the table. Um They if only if they can bottle that for the playoffs. Right. Like yeah. they, they show up and they just demolish whoever is in front of it them. It was like right when people were kind of forgetting about the Bills, they said Oh, everybody's talking about the Dolphins, huh? Let's let's take it to them. Yeah. And now they're about to get Von Miller back too, supposedly. Man. So, yeah. Carolina, Detroit. We got to go three for three, right? The Carolina. Oh no, I'm not going with the Carolina. We Panthers. cannot let the Panthers beat us again. 
listen, I will say I really want Bryce Young to have his first really good game because I don't think this is really his fault. Yeah. Like, the talent around him is an amazing – Adam Thielen can't be your top receiver right. at this point. The blocking isn't great. Mm-hmm. He's just he's out there searching for answers, and you can see it. Miles uh, Sanders stole twenty million. He did. He didn't throw an interception last game, and he like threw had more yards than Kirk Cousins. Yeah, but they they just can't complete drives. Mm-hmm. I I want Bryce Young to have a good game, but the Lions are just so much better. Yeah, yeah, they're they're much better. The uh, the cat fight here we have Panthers and the Lions. Oh boy, classic. Hopefully this is good luck for you. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, yeah. Also, Aiden Hutchinson. Tied for the leader in pressures in the NFL. Him, yeah. I think him, TJ Watt, and one other person tied for 27. Yeah, that's that's pretty good company. I hope the Lions keep getting pressure uh, like they have been. Yeah. Also, the injury report has looked really good this week. Manuel Mosley's supposed to play. And Taylor Decker's supposed to be healthy. J-Mo. Jamison Williams coming back. <laughs> we didn't even talk about that. Forgot about that. Um, got his suspension reduced because of new rulings, um, which I think is great. Yeah. I wouldn't expect anything from him this game. Um, if they hit him on one deep ball, the crowd would go. Yeah. The crowd will go insane. I may not expect him to do anything next game either. The nice thing is he might be at full strength by the time we originally expected him yeah. to be go to good to go. So this will help him ramp up. I think a little bit better. The only nervous thing is Amon Ross St. Brown is on the injury report. So, and it's undisclosed right now. Uh, last thing on that game. I it's not gonna happen, but I think it, there's like a like five percent chance Aiden Hutchinson could have a Khalil Mack last week game, <laughs> where the Carolina Panthers O line is just tired. Yeah, and by the third quarter they're like, "We're what do we do?" Mm-hmm. And Aiden is on like is on like his fourth sack halfway through the third. I think he has a, like a one or two of those games in him, okay. where those pressures start to add up and he really just starts getting there. Yeah, like he I'm- he had the two sack game against the Falcons. I'm not against He's, it. I, he, I think he has a few big ones in him. I'd like to see one of those like James Houston breakout games that we saw last year too. Yeah. So I think he can get two in, in the first and two in the second half. Mm-hmm. Aiden has the the ability. Yeah, the Lions have a very favorable favorable schedule for the next few weeks, which is fantastic. I think it's. I said it before. I think it's the Panthers. Then we play the Bucks. Then it might be the Raiders Monday night game. Listen, that they can't take that Bucks game lightly anymore. And then they have a bye, then the Chargers or something like that. So I'm pulling it up right now. Okay. They they got the they got the pay, the Buccaneers next week. Right. At at Tampa Bay. That's gonna be a game. That's gonna be exciting. And then they go to Baltimore. That's tough. Oh, they have Baltimore. That's a tough back to back. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah Baltimore. Going to Tampa Bay and then to Baltimore. Baltimore will be a really good test. And then Raiders. The Raiders. Yeah. And then to L.A., your Chargers. Your Chargers. And <laughs> yeah, we'll get to them. Yeah. Well, we won't because they're on by this week. True. Um, All right. So, yeah, Detroit, they have a good chance to keep winning. Which we've all we've done fantastic. nothing but agree so far. we got to start picking yeah. differently soon. Well, it gets pretty tough now. Houston at Atlanta. Atlanta has looked awful the I'm last not, two I'm weeks. Not, I'm not picking Atlanta. Oh, you're not? Okay. Actually, let me let me think. This is an Atlanta home game. Taylor Heineke is playing eventually. Probably, Arthur Smith isn't gonna just keep watching this. It's probably not this week. Are you sure? By halftime, uh, if CJ I mean, Stroud is dropping maybe, dimes. Maybe if Mac Collins knocks him out. <laughs> the way he looked at it, yeah. I I kind of feel bad for Des Ritter. Like, yeah. That I uh, having a receiver look at you like that going to a sideline, that just kills mm-hmm. confidence. Right. I get what you're saying. Like the home field advantage thing always messes with me, but Houston's looked pretty darn good. I don't fully believe Houston is good yet. Okay, they're they're a young, exciting team so far. If you're debating, I'll take Houston. I give me Atlanta. <laughs> okay, give me Atlanta. I, I'm just I'm just going for it with that one. How does it feel that Johnny Smith is having a better season than Kyle Pitts? <laughs> Trade Kyle Pitts get him to a team that cares. Get him out of there. It, it's it's terrible. It makes no sense. Uh, Tennessee at Indianapolis, two of the weirdest teams in the NFL for me. Can I pick first? Go for it. 
I believe in what Shane Steichen is doing in Indianapolis. Anthony Richardson has looked really yeah. good. He's he's throwing between like seventeen and like twenty four passes a game. Mm-hmm. He's running a just enough, and his passing plays aren't complicated. Yeah, they're they're getting open receivers. He's hitting passes that he has a high level arm, right? So he can make complicated passes, but he's hitting passes where receivers are open, and they're they're just making him comfortable. Mm-hmm. And I, I'll say it every week for the rest of my life. I don't trust the Titans. Maybe if they relocate and become the Oilers again, I'll trust them. Maybe I, I don't trust Tennessee. I'm going to go with Indianapolis. Okay, I'm going to take Tennessee. I- they're one of those stupid teams. They are stupid teams. That somehow <laughs> finds ways to win. Last week they destroyed the Bengals. The Bengals are awful. That's a whole nother story. Um, but Derrick Henry kind of got back on track last week. Maybe he'll have some momentum going into this game. Kyron Williams kind of ran all over to the Colts last week, so maybe there's something there. I'll go with Tennessee. Oh boy. Giants have <laughs> the Dolphins. <laughs> This is this is just sad. Yeah. This is sad. The Dolphins aren't going to put up 70 again. No. But they might hit 50. The Dolphins might just... The way that Devon Achan is running right now, he might just run Listen, all over. That, that speed is different mm-hmm. when he gets a crease. He just yeah. hits another gear. We might not have to see Tyreek Hill in this game. As wild as that sounds. Miami all the way. Yeah. I just hope that the Giants, like, show some resemblance of, like, an NFL football team this week. New Orleans at New England. The Patriots aren't good. Two teams that have, like, like good franchise history that are struggling right now. I feel like the Saints can still be okay. I do, too. I don't know if the Patriots will be okay. No, I, yeah, I, I don't know. They look like a mess. Mac Jones looked like he's losing every bit of confidence he has. Yeah. He got benched for Bailey Zappi late in the game last week. Like New Orleans defense is still really good. Yeah, <laughs> it, the, their defense keeps them in games, but I don't know. Derek Carr possibly lost them the game last week by playing with his shoulder injury or whatever. Are you, he, are you, are you, it sounds like you're getting close to saying you're I going with New England. I don't know. I, I can't, I feel like I can't pick New England, but do it. It's just weird. Do it. Pick the Pats. What pick are the, the positives Pats. of the Patriots? Christian Gonzalez is out for the season. Exactly. <laughs> they traded for JC Jackson, who got benched yeah. by the Chargers. They're the Chargers, though. They, they're your yeah, LA they, Chargers. They benched him. The Patriots defense. Has been better. I'm going with the Saints. You don't have to pick the Pats, but I'm I'm just trying to look (laughs) if there's any other. Well, there's some decent. It would be it would be ridiculous if the Saints lose this game. Like home field advantage, it barely matters for New England anymore. (laughs) Bill Belichick, he it it, is it's not even a hot take anymore to say he might need to be gone soon. Yeah, because the game just. Yeah, I'll go with New Orleans. Yeah. I, I can't. Coaching decisions, player decisions, it's, he's just not doing things good anymore. Yeah. All right. Baltimore and Pittsburgh. I think we're seeing Mitch Trubisky. Don't pick him. Mike Tomlin said they're not making any moves on offensive coordinator anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers organization needs to start thinking about some things. Mm-hmm. Is and this Mike Tomlin's first season under 500? It's looking like it because that offense is disgusting. If he can get this team to over 500, uh, he's a miracle like, man. TJ Watt is trying his hardest mm-hmm. to have like the MVP season JJ Watt had that they didn't give to him. Yeah. I will preach that forever because he was the MVP that one season, whether it was 16, 17, whatever year that was. TJ Watt might have to do that for the Steelers to make the playoffs this season. Yeah, to win nine games at best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I just don't I don't see it. Baltimore, they killed Cleveland last week with our boy DTR. Yeah, it, it was a bad team to yeah, start against. He, he struggled. Was, yeah, but uh, everybody was praising Cleveland's defense, and Baltimore kind of tore them apart, which yeah. was cool to see. Uh, Eagles at the Rams. 
This is interesting. I don't know how to feel about the Rams. I don't either. I keep thinking they're fake, but they keep like winning. They keep pulling stuff out of a hat. I'm not going to go out on a limb. I'm just going to say Eagles. Okay. I'm going to go out on a limb. Okay. I'll pick the Rams. The Puka Nakua fan. We're all fans of Puka Nakua. Right Cooper now, Cup might play. Uh, he'll probably be in, on a snap count, but maybe it'll give him. Isn't some. it crazy how Calvin Johnson's quarterback was Matthew Stafford in his best years and Cooper Cup became a monster with Matthew Stafford as his quarterback and Puka Nakua was all of a sudden a monster with Matthew Stafford. Isn't that kind of crazy? A little bit. And just, just, a, just a little thing. I don't, I'm not saying he's like a Hall yeah. of Famer or something. I'm, I'm just, yeah, just saying. I mean, Matthew Stafford, I think, has two touchdowns to five interceptions this year. So that's that's a <laughs> that's. A, I'm not saying he's a Hall of Famer or anything. But, but yes, it is interesting. Something about his number one guy. I he's mean, he's gonna get you the ball. He made Golden Tate look really good at one point. So Golden Tate was a really good number two. Uh, I think he was. Too, he was a really but, good two. Uh, all right, Cincinnati at Arizona. Is Josh Dobbs? Yes. Going to outplay. Yes. What happened? I, what happened? I think Joe Burrow should have listened to Jamar Chase and came back much later. He should have rested. His calf doesn't seem right. He's trying to play through it, which sure is somewhat he honorable. He can't, like, stand in the pocket. No. He can't throw a deep he ball. He can't make reads. He They cannot use Jamar Chase the way that Jamar Chase is used best. They are doing short to intermediate routes. They can't send him deep. T. Higgins has looked pretty awful as well because of it. Yeah. The weirdest thing, too, for me, and, and this is because I have Joe Mixon on my fantasy team, if Joe Burrow cannot make 10-yard passes, why is he not dumping it off to Joe Mixon? Because they're still drawing up plays like they're the Bengals from the past like, few years. It just doesn't make sense. They're, it seems like they're stubborn right now. They're they're thinking it's, it's just going to click. It has yeah. to. That's what I think. There, it has to click. Well, pretty, not it's not it's going. It has pretty to pretty quick. It's they're going to run out of time. Listen, man. And it may be this week. Shouts out to Josh Dobbs. They're finally selling his jersey. I'm happy for the kid. Yeah, not the kid, the man. I don't know why I called him the kid. <laughs> it's like I thought of I thought of him still being at Tennessee. Yeah, he's been he's in a the grown man for a while now. now. Are the Cardinals going to beat the Cardinals, the Bengals, and go to two and four? The and the Cardinals have played everybody tough. Are the Bengals about to start one and four? Do you want me to pick the Cardinals? Let listen. Cause I'm leaning that way. <laughs> Until I see it from the Bengals, I feel like I can't pick I'm, them. I'm going I'm going Cincinnati. Okay. I'm I'm doing it to myself. That may make up for me picking the Rams. I'm thinking the same thing the Cincinnati coaching staff is thinking. It has to click. <laughs> yeah. It has to. Right. Uh, Kansas City at Minnesota. I'm not taking Minnesota. Minnesota barely won against the Panthers. Yeah, there's something is just off with them. I feel like this could be a get right game for Minnesota against the Chiefs. Yeah, for some dumb reason against the Chiefs. <laughs> Listen, yeah. Indianapolis beat. Uh, Kansas City last year, so crazier things have happened. Kansas City almost lost to Zach but, Wilson. True. How often does that happen back-to-back -back weeks to the Chiefs? I, not very, but the Chiefs have looked... They haven't looked amazing. Off a little bit. Patrick Mahomes does not have a number one receiver. Travis Kelsey is like by far, by, 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 by far his best option. Yeah, I'm going with Minnesota. But Isaiah Pacheco is my guy. Not only is he my fantasy running back, but he runs harder than any running back I've seen. <laughs> yeah. He's having a good year so far. Yeah. I'm going to go with Minnesota. Maybe the home field advantage works. Uh, I don't know. It should be a shootout. Hopefully it's a fun game. I, I want it to be a fun game at least. Sunday night, we finally get a good Sunday night game. Dallas at San Francisco. I, I just hope the Cowboys get exposed. <laughs> they already have. I'm not have. picking them. They already kind of have. Like the 49ers are so good. Christian McCaffrey is back yeah he's really back put him in bubble wrap please he's so fun <laughs> to watch yeah brandon Ayuk is having a really good season yeah i have george kittle on my fantasy and he's done nothing <laughs> yeah that's the tight end position for you yeah um debo samuel i don't know what his health is looking like he's been banged up last couple weeks um i like to see ronnie bell score in dallas that would be cool 
if Ronnie got a touchdown. I'm going 49ers all the way. I'll never trust the Cowboys. Yeah. Hmm. Unless Micah Parsons goes crazy. Yeah. Unless. I think I'm going to go San Francisco as well. There's a chance the Cowboys beat them now and the 49ers embarrass them, embarrass them again in the playoffs. Right. Yeah. There's a chance that happens. Yeah. That's all right. We won't have too many crazy. What if Dallas went 16-1 and one and then lost in the first round of the playoffs? Yeah. That'd be amazing. And then your Monday night game. How in the heck did the Raiders get two Monday night games? They're playing the Packers, and then they're playing the Lions. I think just because of Devontae Adams and Josh Jacobs and Max Crosby. Like, they have enough star players for a Monday night game to, like, we're in Vegas. We've got the stars. Like, it's more promo than actual football. <laughs> That's what this is. Hopefully by the Monday night game when they come to Detroit, hopefully Devontae Adams and Max Crosby will be on the Lions. <laughs> That that's wishful thinking going to a different level. Yeah, no, but that's too much. <laughs> they they showed like something about you know Devonte Adams wanting out, of course, and of course people were linking the Lions to Devonte Adams, which just makes it fun to think about. We've already talked about Max. Crosby. We, we talked about the the Mike Evans thing too. It's- yeah, they they all make sense. I just don't see Brad Holmes pulling that kind of move. Yeah. Um, this is another game though. Where, as much as I say, why do the Raiders have two Monday night games? And why do I always pick the Raiders when I know they're terrible? Yet again, I still feel like the Raiders could win this game. It's possible. The, the like, Packers are still figuring things out. Yeah. Jordan, they're, not, they're not playing the Bears, so they're not just going to run through a team. Jordan Love is it's sort of being exposed, I guess, but... I think he's he's he's, grown, he's grown with the team. Like yeah, he's figuring things out. They're the out. youngest team in the league. Yeah, they do have Christian Watson back for hopefully like a full snap count this game. I'm not really sure, but uh, should be interesting. Yeah. Ah, I'm going with the Raiders. Gosh dang it, the Raiders. This is how they lose. I'm going with the Cheeseheads in Vegas. This I think this is probably a low scoring game. I don't think this is going to be fireworks. Yeah. I was really is is Garoppolo out again? I think he's supposed to play. I th- I kind of want to see Aiden O'Connell more. I do too. Like I watching Jimmy Garoppolo is just like you're you're solid. I I I'd, I'd rather that, see that yeah. was another disappointing one. Aiden O'Connell last week started the game off terribly with back to back fumbles. He finished well, and then he actually played. He, he outplayed. He brought them back. <laughs> yeah, they still finally. Lost. But Finally getting Devontae Adams back in the lineup because Devontae got banged up in the game. Did you see that pass he threw in a triple coverage that Jacoby Myers just – Yeah. That was a crazy catch. But then he's making the final comeback where they can make it all the way and he throws a pick. And I was, Listen, rookie quarterback stuff. It's like, come on. Especially a rookie pocket passer. Yeah, it was just a, it was a disappointing – He showed some good signs. Crazy roller coaster to, uh, to watch. So – all right, that's our week five picks. Not too many crazy, like, different picks. I, I knew that was coming because when I looked at this week's slate, it's just there's nothing, like, super exciting that jumps off the page. Um, like I said, maybe Philadelphia and the Rams could be interesting. I think Texans-Falcons might be really interesting in a weird way. I hope it's not. Like, it could be a back-and-forth game that ends in the 20s. I'm ready for the Texans yeah. to just take over. And I'm ready for the Falcons. Take over? Well, I was about to, the game, I guess. Oh, okay. I was about to say, Texans taking over. Yeah. I mean, I want them to be good or decent. Um, they It looks like they will be good eventually. And I kind of want the Falcons to crumble. Dang. It, it, maybe I mean, it's for, for the Kyle Pitts thing alone, I do have a, yeah. a small vendetta against Atlanta. Like, I feel like. But, yeah, they're wasting Kyle Pitts. It just, London. it just feels bad. Like, I get it. Arthur Smith is stubborn and he has his ways how's Bijan robinson like year one he's like the go-to every play <laughs> yeah how how is that it yeah how and it like sure like i said before when arthur smith is winning sure fine we we have no room to talk 
You guys are winning. You're getting it done your way. That's fine. We don't like it. It's ugly, but you're winning. Now you're not winning. You've had back-to-back stinkers. You put up six points, and then you put up seven points the past two weeks. That's where I say, okay, now it's it's not working. Let's let's change things up. Let's get Taylor Heineke in there. Let's throw the ball a little bit more. You can still use Bijan Robinson. You don't have to go away from that. You can do two things. I don't know. It's just ugly. I don't like it. Um, and then I think Kansas City, Minnesota could be interesting. Uh, and then of course Dallas and the 49ers hopefully is fun. It could be a defensive slugfest, um, which with these two teams, it could be exciting because they actually get like pick sixes and stuff and scores off turnovers. But uh, it's just a wait and see at this point. All right. I got nothing left. Do you have anything? Um, Just a quick mention. NBA Media Days. Jimmy Butler oh. showing up with the emo cut and the lip piercings. I'm like... 50-50 on it. I liked it and it's, I didn't like it. It's funny. And then the more you think about it, it's yeah. like. Maybe it's a little too far. It's uh, And then he was like, this is my vibe for the year. I was like, ah, oh, Jimmy. Like, yeah. Ugh. At least like a bit much. the day after he posted pictures of back to normal braids and yeah. stuff. But yeah, also, that was weird. Yeah. The Zion looks kind of healthy and he got interviewed. And a reporter asked him what was his favorite uh, road city to visit. And once again, he said Dallas. And uh, he's just, he's he's out here. <laughs> he's hey, Ben Simmons is back too. He's ready. Spencer Dinwiddie had a quote saying Ben Simmons might be the leader of this team. Yeah. So are you betting the under on uh, wins for Brooklyn this year? I, don't, I, I hate it because I'm also like, notoriously for some reason a Ben Simmons believer that he's going to figure it out. I hated the way that everything We're going to have to cut this off by I, the time the season starts. I, I hated the way that, you know, he didn't show like competitiveness and all that. But then like I kept thinking maybe maybe he'll make a comeback cuz I feel like the NBA kind of needs him. He is a guy with all the talent in the world to be all-time great. And he just doesn't have the mentality yeah. He just doesn't have it. Mm-hmm. Like, the one thing he has improved in his career, he kept getting better at defense, and be, he became, like, a top three defender. Yeah. And that's all he improved. Mm-hmm. He didn't get better at anything else. Yeah. He was better on offense in high school than, I don't know. As a rookie, he was better on offense. He tried, yeah. He tried stuff as a rookie. Yeah. He would take mid-range jumpers and, like, comfortably look kind of comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. He's starting to give me – I hate to make this comparison because it's it's like sort of a bad comparison. But he's starting to give me the the hoodie mellow vibes of like all of his practice videos are like smoke and mirrors. Every time I see a summer workout of him hitting threes, yeah, I want to throw my phone in the garbage. Yeah, because people keep doing this. I kind of hate that he's done a lot of workouts with Russell Westbrook. I saw a post today that said Ben Simmons hit ten free throws in a row, and it was a fire emoji afterwards. Wow, nice. where where are we? What, gotta, what, are, what are we doing? You got to shoot like 100 free throws and see how you can do. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of that young Australian man. Yeah. You should have. Why didn't he play for Team Australia? I, <laughs> don't, uh, don't go into it deeper because the deeper you go, the harder uh, it gets. Um, yeah. One final thing, too, that just I just thought of with random NBA stuff that's going on. Mr. Beast is the sponsor of the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, I should take these headphones. What kind of era um, are we in? Listen, man. Whatever is going on in Charlotte. I thought that was a fake post. They got rid happened. of Michael Jordan and things might be getting worse. Yeah. What? What is? Yeah. LaMelo, you need to go soon and get away from your dad, too, because he has LiAngelo you doing see? prison workouts in their front yard well, trying you see to his, sell yeah, his new workout, workout equipment, equipment for $1,000. <laughs> like a couple of bars. We, <laughs> what is what is happening in the basketball community? They're just like bars too, right? They're just but just black bars, weird. just regular out there doing pull ups and bench pressing. <laughs> Levar Ball, man, yeah, he doesn't need to hustle anymore. Listen, he might have ruined his son's career with those prototype <laughs> nonsense church shoes that they were playing in. <laughs> the, the memes of those shoes are uh, fantastic. 
and they were selling them for like seven hundred dollars. It's too much going on. It's they promoted much. a new a new shoe not too long ago, and it too. looks disgusting. They look like fake Yeezys, but worse. I don't oh, know what's boy. happening. Yeah, get out of Charlotte. Listen, shouts out to Dane Kelly Milwaukee. Oubre. Kelly Oubre learned the hard way. He decided to get out. There are people saying him going to Philly is, is trying to spite James Harden. There's some crazy stuff going on right now. <laughs> James Harden is having parties, and he has bottle girls lifting up signs that say... Yeah. Uh, He's supposed to be back, though, today, I think. I want him to retire. I, I'm I'm done with him playing basketball, really. I, I, I don't want to see him anymore. Oh, boy. All right. Now we've used up our time. I like that last. <laughs> I forgot about all the weird media day stuff <laughs> it's, that happened. There's it's a lot going on. Yeah. Alrighty, this has been used from the sidelines. We'll see you guys next time. Shouts out to Emo Jimmy. <laughs>